Hi, I'm Kelly Forshaw Smith, Head Medical Micropigmentation Trainer for the Finishing Touches Group and Director and Technician of Medicos London. Today we have Kate Dawes for interviewing, and her subject is the psychology of hair loss. So, Kate is the company director, trichologist, and leading SMP artist for both Medical Hair Restoration Australia and Folly Sim. Kate is a member of the IAT and has been in the hair industry for over 35 years. She is located in Perth, Western Australia, and Kate has become one of Australia's leading scalp micropigmentation artists. In 2019, Kate was a finalist in the WSMPA Australian Artist of the Year and Team Micro International Artist of the Year. She gives regular presentations on both SMP and permanent cosmetics around the world, um, is an educator um, on, on hair loss and also scalp conditions. In 2018 and 19, Kate was on the expert panel at the Team Micro Conferences in the UK. She's also helped to run SMP workshops for hair transplant surgeons in 2019 in the ISHRS Congress. Kate has just been announced as the first team member on the FYT for Pro All Female. It is quite an achievement, Kate, I must say, just reading all of that. And I have a massive pleasure all the way from down under to introduce the multi-talented Kate Dawes. Welcome, Kate. Thank you, Kelly. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. So first of all, I'd like to say that I've actually had the fortune uh, many times to see you demonstrate and speak at some of the conferences. And I have to say, out of everybody I know, you know the most about hair conditions, hair solutions, and everything there is to know about the scalp. So we're in very safe hands when we do our conversation for today. Well, thank you. <laughs> so, so how do you combine your trichology knowledge and your SMP knowledge together? Well, I use my trichology knowledge to help me establish what sort of hair loss it is that I'm dealing with before I do SMP, simply because not all hair loss conditions are suitable for SMP. Um, I find that being a trichologist also gives the client a lot more confidence in what I'm doing. So they, they know that I come from a, a background, from, of a medical background as well, um, as an artistic one, having been a hairdresser too. Um, so yeah, I, I find the combination of the two works really well together. Very good. And what's the most common form of hair loss that you come across in your clinic? Well, naturally it's male pattern baldness. We see an awful lot of that. I'd say 95% of what we see is male pattern baldness, but of course we do see some female pattern baldness with women and um, some alopecia areata. We get the occasional alopecia totalis, but, and then I do get quite a lot of women coming. I've had a few actually recently coming in for consults and they've actually got frontal fibrosing alopecia, which is a very nasty scarring alopecia, which is not suitable for SMP until it's totally um, treated and healed. Um, the hair won't grow back and SMP is not really suitable for it because it is the frontal area of the head. So um, yeah, we see a little bit of that as well, simply because it's closely associated to the use of sunscreen, believe it or not. And here in Australia, you know, with our sun here. Um, you lucky thing. <laughs> well, it's 38 <laughs> degrees today, so I don't know. <laughs> so just for people out there who maybe are not sure, so the male pattern baldness, if just run us through that quickly, roughly what that is. Obviously, it can go on forever, but roughly what that <laughs> is. Okay, well, male pattern baldness, of course, affects men. Um, it's a hormone genetic based hair loss. So there's um, a pretty stock standard pattern of hair loss where it usually starts in the temple areas and starts receding back. You do get some men that will have it starting in the crown area and then the frontal area and then it meets in the middle. It is um, measured on a scale called the Norwood scale. So starting in Norwood two, which is full head basically, to a Norwood seven, which means I've just got the little horseshoe left at the back here. There are differing types of male pattern baldness, but so you also have things like dupa, diffused uniform pattern alopecia, which means the hair at the back is also very unstable and they will tend to go totally bald within reason. And also you've got retrograde alopecia, so it's starting from the nape going up as well. So yeah, so there's, wow. there's different sorts in there, but on a whole, it's basically just on top. It's, it's because of the hormone, dehydrotestosterone, which um, affects the follicles basically. So yeah, that's it. Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> in a nutshell, that is very informative. That's amazing. So often our clients are coming to us and it's after a journey. They, they've tried different solutions. They've tried different things. Um, what would you recommend? Like who would be recommended to have SMP? What type of patient? Well, we get all a broad brand. We get a lot of clients who have gone down the path of medications, hair transplants. Um, I actually consulted a gentleman today who's had two hair transplants. He's not able to have any more because he doesn't have enough donor hair left. So SMP is his next stop. So um, the thing is with dealing with people that have gone through this journey already, they are quite emotionally affected naturally because a lot of things haven't actually worked for them. So um, everything has a limitation. Medication has its limits. Transplants have their limits. I mean, they are fantastic surgeries, but they still have a limitation as well. Um, and quite often they've come to us when they're at the end of their journey, they're at the end of their wits, they've, they've had enough and s and is really going to be their only option to give them some sort of look of having hair left. Yeah. I mean, and again, people out there who maybe are not in the SMP industry, what is, what do we, what are we creating with SMP? What sort of look are we creating? Well, there's two sort for men, basically. So initially you have your buzz cut look. So it's giving them that five o'clock shadow of a freshly shaved scalp. Um, or there's density work. So men that still have some hair left um, or are starting to thin, starting their hair loss journey. I have plenty of young guys actually coming in who are starting to thin and they're not prepared to take medications because obviously the side effects and things like that. They don't want to do surgery. They don't want to do a transplant. Um, so, or they're not suitable for transplant also is another cause. So they come in and they do density work. So here we just add the look of, of density to the hair. Um, to the existing hair and then as their hair loss journey progresses then they end up shaving their scalp hair down and we do a full head basically and, and also you treat women as well don't you yeah yeah we treat women as well i mean like you know most of that is adding density is density work so giving the appearance of having more hair th making the appearance of thicker hair um, though you do get a bit of scarring and alopecia areatus and things like that too Okay. And, and based on um, when a client comes to you, do you ever turn anyone away based on their expectations or their psychological state? Yes, we do. We, we, we're very careful in who we treat because um, some people do have unrealistic expectations of what they're going to achieve with, with their SMP. Um, and that comes down to your consultation with them. Um, we get red flags and, you know, any clients that we get clients that will email us after consultations with a list of questions. And a lot of them are quite unrealistic. I mean, yeah. big one is, of course, is when's my hair going to grow back? They obviously don't understand the process whatsoever. I mean, we will eventually do them perhaps, you know, if they then understand what it is that we actually do. But, yeah, no, we, we are very careful on who we, we do this treatment for because a lot of them, as I said, have gone down the emotional journey before of hair loss with other treatments and have been unsatisfied. So we want to make sure that they are satisfied with SMP. Yeah, I mean, I, I've had people who have come to me after I've like I've said, look at the website, look at the frequently asked questions. They come into the clinic and they're like, oh, I didn't realise it was a needle. I'm like, well, yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, and obviously from there, the consultation, and then you give them a chance to have a think about it, work out whether it's what they want as well. Because sometimes, say people did just take on these patients, you can actually do more damage to somebody um, in the long run. That's right, exactly. A, a lot of these people, um, that have, I mean, hair loss is... It's a, so it affects them so much emotionally, you know. I mean, that's one of the reasons why a lot of um, SMP artists do what we do is because we love being able to help people. I mean, like I've had so many men come off of my treatment bed, you know, in tears of happiness because of what you know we've achieved, and it is such a fantastic feeling to be able to, you know, give that to somebody. Um, I mean, I've had absolutely no hair myself. I was totally bald for six months, so I understand um, what it's like. I mean, I knew my hair would grow back because mine was due to uh, medical condition. Um, you know, so it's it's um, a very emotional journey for a lot of these people, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any tips or tricks or of managing expectations of these people? Um, I tell them the honest truth of what it is that we do and I don't, um, we don't upsell, we don't, um, you know, use forceful sales tactics. We are very honest with what we do and what we can achieve for them. We never give them, we, we like to under promise and over deliver basically. So that, that's our attitude is like, we tell them exactly what it is, how it's done, 
Um, you know, we give them the opportunity to go home, think about it, talk to their loved ones. We, we um, tell people to go speak to other clinics as well because yeah. you need to feel comfortable with a person that's doing this for you, obviously. But, um, yeah, we, we tend to, yeah, just be very honest in how we approach the subject, yeah. Well, I remember, like, um, you've got a forum, haven't you, on, on Facebook that I'm part of, which is all about hair loss, because there's obviously so yeah. much. We, we've got, we've got like, 15, 20 minutes to talk, but I'll go on the forum. That's what I'd recommend. Can anyone join that forum? Um, any SMP or PMU artist is more than welcome to join. It's called SMP Trichology. And if you flick back through all the posts that I've done, and anyone can post anything on there except yeah. for your before and afters, I mean... I've sort of stated that, you know, you're more than, you can post before and afters of an unusual hair loss case, but your normal day-to-day male pattern baldness work, you know, yeah. there's plenty of forums on Facebook for that. Yeah. Um, it's, this is more about asking questions about different sorts of hair loss, scalp conditions. Um, I've, I've, I have gone through anatomy of the scalp yeah. and physiology of the scalp, things like that. So, I mean, flick back through all the posts. I'll start reposting things from the beginning as well. To, yeah. No, th- thank you for doing that. I find it really interesting uh, whenever I look on it because I was at my my side family side was obviously wigs and hair pieces back in the day. So uh, yes, yeah. all of it's kind of coming up a little bit more, but it's really interesting. So anyone who is in SMP, um, I would recommend that they go onto it. So what was it called again? SMP Trichology. Okay, fantastic. Um, so it stated that the number one case of sleepless nights is hair loss, which means we have a unique opportunity to help those who are in need. Is there anything that you would recommend to new technicians to prepare them for those clients who are greatly affected by their hair loss? Um, well, firstly, I'd be um, I'd have a lot of empathy for these people. I mean, a lot of SMP artists are actually clients that have had this procedure done and have gone on to train to do it so a lot of them have already gone through the hair loss process so they um, understand what it is like but you need to understand that everybody's journey through this is totally different and how it affects them um, is totally different some people are just they don't aren't affected quite as much but some people are deeply affected by this I had um, if I can just talk about one client I had that, can. Um, brings back amazing memories for me he was a, a young man that came in um, very rounded in the shoulders, very, you know, came in in tracksuit pants and a T-shirt, didn't, you know, scruffy beard sort of thing. And when we are doing his treatments, he said to me um, that he didn't feel like he suited his partner. He said his partner was a beautiful looking male and he really did not suit his partner. And um, when he came in for his last session, he came in in a beautiful suit purple suit nice and bright he stood tall his partner came with him and he was a good looking man um and and when he came off the treatment bed he said he got up he looked in the mirror he goes now I suit my partner and I just went oh my god that is so sweet like god that really touched me because it was how much it has deeply affected him in his you know with the hair loss so um when you're treating clients, um, have a lot of empathy for them. You know, don't, I mean, I have seen people just walk up and just pull hats off without asking if you can touch the client. Some clients don't want their hat ripped off. I mean, we actually do our consults in our reception area, in the waiting area. Um, so if there's somebody else in there, you, you just can't support because they, they might yeah. not want their hat taken off. You need to treat them with kick gloves within reason, you know what I mean? And just understand that they are usually quite emotional about it. For us who haven't really needed SMP, like, you know, there's many women. I mean, I remember seeing a post on Team Micro once about um, male artists that have had SMP convert their consults better than female artists. And I don't actually agree with that. Okay. Because my, I have a very high conversion rate for my, my consults. Yeah. And it's about how you approach it. That's all it is, you know, I mean, with your empathy and caring nature. And I think most SMP artists are doing this for the right reason. They, they aren't, you know, they, they do the process for the right reasons. And um, they are obviously very empathetic towards their clients. But, yeah, I would just, um, for new artists out there, just, yeah, remember that these guys have been through quite a hard journey, um, you know, and so, you know, you, you have to sort of gauge each client and you can sort of feel from them where they're at in that journey and how you treat them. No, 100%. Couldn't agree with you more. Um, I know you did a study last year. Um, Tell me a little bit Mm. about that. Okay, well, last year, actually, I I did the study when to have some information for when I came over for the Olympia Beauty um, Conference last year in in London. That was fun. Um, 
<laughs> that was great. Wasn't it? It was Thank good. you for the advice. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait for we can travel again. We can't travel no, yet. So. It's going to be lovely, isn't it? I know, I know. We'll be good once we can. So um, what I did, I actually did a study of 25 clients. And excuse me while I read my notes here a bit. So I had a, um, some questions on a scale from one to five with one being okay and five being the worst case scenario. And I asked different questions regarding how they felt about their hair loss. So 72% um, found that the hair loss was devastating and they lost their confidence. And that's 72, that's a yeah. high. And this is all males, mind you. I didn't ask any feminists, this is all males. 79 said that affected their social life. 28% said work life. 36% love life. 50% wow. always wore hats, always. 86% um, said they actually thought about a few times a day. So it wasn't just a once in a blue moon. This is 86% a few times a day. So they're quite fixated on it, you know. 79% said that it contributed to their anxiety and depression. So then I asked them to use words to describe how it made them feel. So of course, unattractive was a big one, negative focal point, um, sad, they felt low in confidence, ridiculed, they felt and look older. One said he felt cheated, which is really, you know, interesting. Um, they felt uncomfortable, worn down, less virile, and also incomplete. So it was quite a um, interesting study, you know, and, and yeah. getting into your issues there. And I also have um, read a lot of studies um, that have been conducted worldwide on the psychological effect of hair loss. And, and a lot of it came down to the loss of identity. Yeah. You know, we use hair, well, I do, especially women do particularly, but men do now so much more as well to promote um, our personalities. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I'm, I mean, I'm a big one. I change my hair colour and I cut it short. I grow it long. I might shave it off. I do dreadlocks. I do all sorts of things with my hair, depending on my mood and how I want to present myself to the world. Yeah. So when I had no hair and I couldn't do that, you did feel a sense of loss of being able to express who you are. Yeah. I mean, thankfully, as a female, we can wear hats and scarves and do different things like that. But for men particularly, it is a lot harder. They can't do anything apart from wear a cap. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's very hard for them to express who they are. So it's that loss of identity. And I think for men, it's, you know, when you give them back a hairline, that is a huge, <laughs> a yeah. huge thing for men. I'm just seeing that you know and I know they can't style it or anything but it just gives them something that they feel you know because also a hairline gives you your face shape yeah. it contributes parts of your face shape so if you lose that you know it's <laughs> yeah. yeah you lose your whole you know sense of face basically yeah that is fascinating. That's absolutely brilliant. I mean, mm. well, it's not brilliant, obviously, for the patients and such, but, you know, no. the, the knowledge that you've got there of how it makes somebody feel. I mean, somebody out there who's thinking, you know, I'm just alone. This is how I feel. Actually, there's a lot of people who, well, lots and lots of people who feel like that. I mean, yeah. is there any it's kind of statistic of how many people are affected by hair loss? Um, maybe, obviously, you'll have the Australian side, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, for, as in, for male pattern borders, you know, I mean, it, a good 80 odd percent of men will experience hair loss of some form in their lifetime you know what i mean and where there might be a, a bit of thinning or i mean i'd say it's actually higher than that and for women i mean like they would say it's 50 percent of women but it's not there's a lot higher for women yeah. as well i mean i think i believe you know a good 80 odd percent of women experience some type of hair loss whether that be something like telogen effluvium which is just a transition you know it's a yeah the hair regrows it's just temporary it's not permanent you know it doesn't re really require any treatment or SMP treatment, I suppose you yeah. could say. Um, you know, so we all experience some sort, really, at the end of the day. I mean, day. That, that's such a high amount. So obviously, mm -hmm. like you're saying, it's good to be able to actually do this um, and to be able to do the treatments. Do you think that in the future, um, so obviously people know about hair transplant clinics, um, SMP is not as widely known. I'm sure it will be in years to come. But do you think people all, you know, it'll be like a regular everyday thing that people will be coming to the clinic, they'll, they'll know a bit more about us? Yeah, I, I, I really do believe so. I'm finding that now um, here in Australia, I'm, 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 SMP is more well known worldwide than what it is here in Australia. It still is, you know, finding its feet here as an industry. 
Um, but a lot more clients know what it already is, but they've done their research. They, you know, they've been researching what it is and things like that. And they've heard about it in, from different, you know, I think Facebook and Instagram is great because they just throw up ads. <laughs> yeah. You know, if they've, if they've Googled hair loss, they just get ads for, you know, SMP and then they start researching artists in the area and things like that. So I, I think you'll find that SMP, I mean, hair transplants, for example, there's only, you know, really a small percentage of people that are suitable for a transplant. Right. Many men get transplanted that are not suitable and shouldn't yeah. actually have a transplant. So, um, but now that SMP has come along, um, I think you'll find that we, SMP will be a much bigger industry than transplants. Can I dare say that? I think we can, <laughs> we can. What we we'll, can, do is yeah. we'll report back in a year. Oh, yeah, it might take a few years to report that. But yeah, say, yes. Kate Dawes says. <laughs> no, no, don't say that. <laughs> oh, my, my stepmother's a hair transplant surgeon, and so is my sister. Oh. So, no, don't say that. <laughs> oh, I love it. But I believe it will be because it's suitable for so many more people. The only limitations on this naturally is the fact that you've got to shave your head. Yeah. Basically. So, for men that want hair, that's all they want is hair, then their only option is medication and transplantation, and that's it. As long as they've got the right donor hair. And, I mean, if they're in Norwood 7 and they've got really fine donor hair, they're not getting a full head of hair through a transplant. Yeah. There's no way until cloning actually happens. Or 3D printing, that's another one that's coming in, apparently, I've heard. But anyway, that's, yeah, mm. that's a, yeah, all sorts of things are happening. But um, it's SMP is workable for so many situations so that I think it will eventually yeah be a much better option for most men it's it's affordable it's a lot more affordable yeah um great results have done correctly and I mean like at the moment a shaved head with a beard is the best look out <laughs> like it looks amazing so you know I mean we you know, it's, it's quite a fashion statement here in Australia at the moment you know the shaved heads and beard yeah. so Oh, yeah. um, just, out, just out of interest, nothing to do with the psychology of um, hair loss, but what machine and what products are your favourite? Okay, well, at the moment, I've just um, purchased the Microbo Flux S, the wireless, and I'm absolutely loving that. It's fantastic. Um, I use FYT pink needles. Okay. They're amazing. Yeah, they're really fantastic simply because they're, um, the configuration of the needles, they're so tight but the impression is just so perfect every time. It's, it's what, what size needle do you use? Well, I, I six, eight or a 10, basically, depending on the situation. So I swap between, I might use all three on one head, you know, wow. so it just depends. I, I, you know, yeah, I sort adapt of um, to it. adapt, yeah, whatever I feel I need to use is what I use. So it depends, it all depends on the skin type, you know, and things and the results I want. So, yeah. And um, I, know, and I know that you're, um, you're obviously your family, you mentioned your husband. Um, and um, I know that you're obviously daughter as well, um, are in the business. Well, both my stepdaughters are in the business. Both so, your stepdaughters. Yeah, so my husband and I own the business naturally and he does all the admin business side of things like that, which totally frees me up just to be an artist which is wonderful, um, mainly here in Perth. I mean, he travels, well, now that he's allowed to travel, he travels over, he's back, he's actually in Melbourne at the moment with the girls. So he hasn't seen his daughters or grandkids for 11 months, 12 months. So wow. yeah, yeah, so it's been a long time for him. So he's over there at the moment. So um, so Kelly is one of our artists. You've met Kelly? Yes, I have. Thank you, Kelly, yeah, yeah. Um, she's an artist in Melbourne. And Diane, my eldest stepdaughter, she does all the admin and a lot of the business side stuff for Melbourne and Sydney. Very Melbourne good, Sydney very yeah, good. So, so where are you located? Where are your clinics? So um, where I'm located in Fremantle, Western Australia. So um, it's my hometown. Um, Kelly and Omar are in Melbourne, North Melbourne. And then Susie and Nat are in Sydney. And they, they actually work out of... Uh, clinic called Man Cave Sydney which is my sister's medical clinic for men so she does medical treatments for men there so Amazing. we have a room there with them so yeah it's really you, you can't beat family you can't beat family obviously speaking um, <laughs> from myself as well I mean obviously it can be a nightmare and you find that I don't know over the Christmas table maybe you'll start talking about like I don't know pair placement or densification but oh absolutely. It, in a whole, it's we good, have, isn't like, it? 
Yeah. Well, then we have my stepmother, who's a hair transplant surgeon here. <laughs> and when my father was alive, he ran that business. So wow. all you know, we talked about was hair or business or, you know, which is, you know, quite hilarious. Okay, question yeah. then. Who's the most passionate about all the hair loss solutions and, uh, and information? Passionate or more out, knowledgeable? Passionate and knowledgeable. <laughs> out of your family, who would you say? Well, my stepmother, obviously, because she's a doctor. Yeah. Um, though I have taught her a thing or two as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, between the two of us, because, yeah, I, you know, I, I also studied nutritional medicine, so I know a lot of the, wow. the biochemistry sort of stuff behind follicles and stuff like that. Um, and, yeah, so between the two of us, we're definitely the most passionate about it. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's no questioning that you definitely, you're like the guru of scalp conditions and solutions, like in, in my head with like the trichology and everything. Um, your, your knowledge is outstanding. Oh, thank you. I just um, can research actually. <laughs> That's well, what it is. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. I, love, so, I love researching. Yeah. So that, where, you know, I love reading clinical trials and studies and all that you sort geek. of stuff. So <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's got my bedtime reading but knowledge is power so they say absolutely is and um yeah I have a passion for learning definitely um yeah you, you can never learn enough but Kate I'd recommend to anyone who's seeing this anyone who's watching thank you very much for joining us number one um and then yes, hopefully maybe in the long run we can do another one all together um and then hopefully in the far future well not too far future we can all meet up in person Yes, I'm so hanging out to be able to just, yeah, travel again and, and get on a plane. I mean, we won't be allowed out of our country unless we have a vaccine and right. have, you know, have a vaccination. Yeah, so they're, they're really strict in Australia. So um, I'll be getting vaccinated so I can travel. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Well, we look forward to seeing you. Kate Dawes, yeah. thank you so much. That was Psychology of Hair Loss. If you have any questions or want to know any more, please obviously subscribe and write in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching. Thanks, Kate. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. Lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you. Have a wonderful evening. I will. Thank you. You too. Lovely. Oh, Take care, lovely honey. Day. Thank you very much. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.